Hi there. This will be a introduction video of how to start a 3D project in Unity. So I've already created a 3D base project. There's no other assets in here uh, other than a main camera and a directional light. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump into it. So we have our main camera, and that's what our player will see. It's a 3D camera. It has a field of view. And then we have a directional light. We don't have any really objects in here that the light is casting on. Uh, what's also connected to this direction light is the sky sphere, which is behind and kind of in the environment. That's connected to the sky sphere, or the sky sphere is connected to the light. So there's our sunlight, and if I take my light and rotate it, the sunlight will actually move with it in the sky sphere. The lighting in the sky sphere will change accordingly as well. So that's pretty neat to be able to see as default. Let's create uh, an empty or a new game object. We're gonna do a 3D object. And I'm going to zero everything out, so I'm going to, I can just reset the transforms right here. And let's add something really large. So let's do 50 uh, for X, Y is the vertical axis, and then Z. We're going to do 50. So there you go. Can actually make this a little bit uh, thinner. So we'll do maybe point, point 0.5. Try that for us for default. That'll be fine. So that'll be our uh, ground surface. Uh, we'll rename that one floor. Floor. Okay. Let's create a new game object. It's going to be a sphere, and for this demo, we're just going to do a basic um, kind of rollerball kind of demo thing, and then we're going to customize it as we move along. So I'm going to move this up uh, maybe to one. Let's see. Yeah, so I'm going to put my scale back to one so that when I move my ball up to one, the ball will be resting on the top of the floor. We're going to rename the ball player. So for 3D objects, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a little different than 2D objects, we have a mesh renderer, and then it goes ahead and creates a collider force. This is a sphere collider for the ball. For the floor, we have a box collider. So it goes ahead and sets these things up for us in 3D. For our player character, the ball, we're also going to need a rigid body. So we're going to do a rigid body. If you type in rigid body, it'll come up in there. I'm just going to use the default settings here. One thing to note is that there's not a gravity value. If you go up to File, uh, or actually Edit Project Settings, and I go up to the Physics tab, there's my default gravity for a 3D scene, negative 9. 0.81, which is our gravity here on Earth. We can also change other things like the bounciness, uh, friction, and things like that, but there is no kind of gravity value in the rigid body for a 3D rigid body. We would go and change this in the Project Settings Physics tab. Alright, 3D movement in the camera is something a little bit good to use to if you've never done anything like this before. <coughs> Excuse me, left click is always going to be selection. Middle mouse button, scroll wheel down as a button is pan. Right click down as a button is look around. So I'm not moving the body around if this was a person. I'm looking at it as if I'm rotating my head. Uh, we can also use alt and left click to orbit or rotate around. We can use alt and middle mouse to pan again. We can use alt and right click to smooth zoom. And then the scroll wheel as a scroll wheel is a snap zoom. So it also has similar alt mouse buttons as what other 3D modeling software has. The last one is if I hold down right click and then use WASD, that's like a fly around action. So that's one way to kind of move around. If you hold down shift, it'll go faster. But that's kind of like a fly around action. So the first thing you need to understand for 3D is how to navigate around in our viewport. I've set it up so I see my scene and I see my game display. If it's not like that, it may be over here as a tab for the scene and game. I just take my game tab and move it over here to the side. And I scale that down so I can always see what my camera is going to see. It's a good way to kind of approach 3D. Alright, so we need to set it up so we can move this character. This will be a quick video of uh, a simple script to move the play around and then later videos will add some more detail to this. So in my assets folder I'm going to right click and choose create new folder. I'm going to call this one script scripts. Then in that scripts folder I'm going to right click 
create new C sharp script and we'll call this one player movement. Before I move out of Unity, I'm going to select my player object and add that player movement script as a component. Okay, let's save. Then I'm going to double click on my player movement script and open it up in my script editor. I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code. So here's my player movement script. We're going to add a couple lines of code to get the movement going here, and we need one public variable and one private variable. So in my public class, to start off with, I'm going to do a public variable. We'll do public float, and we're going to call this one speed. Put a semicolon at the end there. I'm going to turn down a couple times. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and we're going to add a private variable. This is going to be linking it to the rigid body. So private rigid body, and we're going to call that locally RB semicolon. All right, so in the story uh, void start, sorry, void start, we need to connect our local variable of RB to RB equals to the rigid body component of this object. So RB equals get component uh, angle bracket, and then the component name is rigid body. Then in that with another angle bracket, we're going to open and close parentheses and put a semicolon. So that connects our local variable called RB to the rigid body component. For a player movement, horizontal movement, we're actually going to change the void update to void fixed update. And then within void fixed update, we're going to add a couple of uh, local variables that we're going to reference that are just going to be needed within this uh, function. So we're going to do a float and we need two different actions. We need to see if the player is pressing the horizontal motion A or D or left and right arrow keys and if the player is pressing the vertical keys uh, W, S or up and down arrow. And we're going to translate that into uh, the four axis motion that the ball can move. So we're going to do the first one called move left right. So move capital L capital R. And we're going to do equals to input dot get axis. We're going to open parentheses and open quotation. And we're going to call that horizontal. In quotation in parentheses semicolon. So basically this is going to get the horizontal uh, key press buttons uh, A or D or left or right arrow keys and then funnel that into a local variable that we're going to call move LR for left right. We're going to do another one, float move uh, front back, so FB. You can call this vertical, but in 3D this is really the forward backward motion. So float move FB equals, and same thing, input dot get access, open parentheses, open quotation, this is going to be vertical and semicolon there. So that'll be the W or S or the up and down arrows. Okay, so after we create those local variables, then we're going to add it to a vector 3 that applies force to the rigid body. So we're going to get a reference to our rigid body, RB dot add force, capitalize add, capitalize force. I'm going to open parentheses and we're going to create a new vector 3. <coughs> we're working in 3D. Uh, we need all three axes, so we have X, Y, and Z axis. <clears throat> so it's basically going to look like this, 0, comma, 0, comma, 0. <clears throat> the first 0 is X, the second 0 is Y, the third 0 is Z. For basic motion, we want to adjust the X and Z and not the vertical motion right here. So instead of the first 0, we're going to reference our speed variable, so speed times asterisk symbol move left right so that's the x horizontal left right motion speed times move left right let's get rid of that first zero y is the vertical axis we're going to leave that alone z is the third axis so then we're also going to do speed times move fb our front back i'll float we'll add a semicolon to the end all right so let's uh save <coughs> this motion will allow us to have with input WASD or the arrow keys to add a force to the rigid body, move the player ball left or right or forward or backwards. So save. Let's go into Unity. Let's make sure we don't have any errors. 
a misspelled rigid body there. Okay, uh, this B right here should be a lowercase b. So rigid body, the R is capitalized, the rest is lowercase. Let's save, let's go back in Unity. Make sure we're not an issue anymore. There we go. All right, so now we can go play. Uh, in my game mode, I have maximize on play on, so that I don't have to play it from the small view. So when I hit play here, it's gonna look through the camera. And then if I use WASD, we didn't add any speed, so it's not going to work yet. If I go back to my player, if I back out of play mode, go back to my player and add speed, it's times zero, so it's not going to be able to move anything. So let's do times five <clears throat> for the speed. Speed will be the um, how fast the ball can move. And then now let's go play. So when I play that maximize on play, is going to maximize my game view. Then now if I come in here and hit W or S, it'll move the ball forward or backwards. If I Hit A or D, it moves the ball left or right. All right. So we can change the, the speed, increase it more, go back and play test, maybe 10, and see what that looks like. That's a little better there. I think that's a little easier to see and move the ball around. So let's go back to our script and add one more thing if we wanted to add a jump to this as well. So we're going to go back to our script, and underneath our void fixed update, we're going to add a void update. Okay, and I'm going to open up and close curly brackets. So for actions like jumping, we want to add it to an update. For movement, we want to add a fixed update. So let's go up to the top and we're going to add underneath our public float speed, we're going to add a public float jump. So this would be how high we want the player to jump. And then in our void update that we have added, we're going to create an if statement. So if uh, open parentheses input get key down. We want to see if the space bar is pressed. Open parentheses key code dot space and then close those two parentheses. Let's make sure we're spelling input properly. So make sure we're spelling space properly. There we go. We want to see if the space bar is pressed. And we'll return down to open and close this on set of curly brackets. And then we want to go rigid body where it's reference our rigid body. And we're going to type in velocity equals, we need to reference our vector 3 for x, y, and z. And then instead of doing our open up a new vector 3, we're just going to do vector 3 dot up, which means the y axis. So vector 3 dot up, I'm going to do times jump. And we're going to do semicolon. Right. So it's going to multiply whatever our jump value is going to be and then add a force vertically to the rigid body of the character. Let's save, go into Unity, make sure we have that spelled all correctly. In our player script, we're gonna add a jump, so let's do five for a jump. And let's go play test. All right, so when I play, I still have WASD. And if I hit spacebar, now my character can jump. So I can jump over objects. So there's base movement for a third person uh, point of view 3D game of a ball that can move around. We're going to come back in later videos and discuss more complex things of adding to this, uh, such as cameras, materials, and more complex motion and interactions with this character or ball. That'll wrap up this video.